Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Tish Millsap, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing at .NET News Corporation. I'm very happy to be the host of today's web seminar, Community on 6.2, Going Social. Our speaker today is Scott Wilhite, the Director of Community Relations here at .NET Nuke. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Tish. Um, before we get started, hang on. Just a second. OK, great. Uh, before we get started, just some quick housekeeping. I want to make sure everyone is comfortable with the web seminar platform. Please look at your GoToWebinar control panel. There's a little button where you can raise your hand. And if you could just raise your hand, if you can hear me. All right, we're good. And if you can see, see my slide, uh, please use the raise your hand feature again. Let me know. OK, great. Looks like everything is operational now. Um, I'll be going over, though there's going to be a lot of information in this web seminar, and I want you to know that if you have questions, you can ask them at any time using the Ask a Question feature. Um, we will take questions at the end, so we'll sort of gather them all and try to respond to as many as we can during this web seminar. And um, if we can't get to all of them, we will attempt to respond to all of them via email within the next day or two. Okay, great. Just a few things before we get started. Um, we have several people on the line right now. Some of you are likely to be familiar with .NET News. Some of you are not. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about the company. We are the world's number one web content management system in the Microsoft ecosystem. We're just about to take over 2,000 commercial customers, uh, but we started as an open source project in 2002. We're by far the largest and most successful open source project in Microsoft history. Um, we started selling commercial editions of our product in 2009. There has been a very high growth business, and as a result of that, we made the Inc. 500 fastest growing companies list in 2011. In fact, we were number 23 out of software companies. Uh, some more highlights about .NET Nuke. Because of the open source nature of our business, there are about 700,000 websites around the world that are powered by DNN. And over the years, we've had over 7 million downloads of the software. Um, we have an online marketplace called the .NET Nuke Store. And in there, there are about a thousand, there are thousands of modules, extensions, and designs, uh, which make building a website very fast and affordable for our customers. Finally, last but not least, we have a very large and strong community of folks that uh, contribute to the open source project, have a depth of knowledge about .NET Nuke, and actively participate in continuing the project. Uh, so .NET Nuke is a software company. We have a web content management system with a bunch of additional capabilities. Um, so we uh, you can um, document management, social, mobile. Uh, they allow our customers to adapt quickly and move fast and take advantage of new opportunities for their online presence. Um, one common theme that we come across with customers is the problem of business agility. By that, I mean they struggle with doing things faster, doing things more efficiently as well as affordably, and scaling their business in an environment of unpredictable change. Think back to the year 2000 and what the internet was like then. Uh, at the time, the web was very static. But as you know, in the past 10 years, things have changed dramatically. But who could have predicted the growth in social interactions? Who could have known how absolutely critical mobile devices would become in delivering content? Fundamentally, how we use websites has changed from just a source of information to a place of meaningful interaction anywhere, anytime around the globe. So what we were encouraging our customers to think about is making the right platform decisions that allows you to adapt quickly to that unpredictable change on the web. 
um, we hope that our customers are able to adapt quickly, take advantage of those new opportunities for their online presence, making their most valuable business asset, their website, work as hard as possible for them. Just to finish up, um, DNN comes in three different versions, our free community edition, our professional edition, and our enterprise edition, each with its own set of features and functions. Um, I encourage you to visit our website and learn more about each of these. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Scott Wilhite. Scott's here to talk about um, our new latest release, 6.2. Uh, we have a lot of new exciting social features that we are now using within our own community. Thanks, Tish. I appreciate that. Uh, so it's my pleasure, actually, to consider how to share with you guys uh, the community on 6.2, Coin Social. But let me take just a minute and I'll tell you a little bit about myself, if you don't mind. Um, I am Alaska born and bred. I have two degrees from Baylor University, which is in Waco, Texas, uh, famous for all the wrong reasons. And uh, after 10 years traveling the Southeast as an IT consultant, I moved to Seattle to marry the girl of my dreams, who I've known for over 30 years. Uh, my friend Tish is rolling her eyes. Yeah, I'm not a great story. <laughs> I am an original uh, member of the core team from .NET Nuke way back in 2003. And I managed the first release of the .NET Nuke that Sean himself didn't manage. Uh, I introduced the team to the discipline of version control, issue tracking, and release management. So a lot of background there. Uh, some of my contributions include a uh, rewrite of the skinning engine, uh, the recycle bin, and a few other uh, bits. Um, I also established the open source dot and Nuke Forge, and I've managed our volunteer team since uh, since the beginning of time, actually. Uh, by default, I guess I'm also the founding member of CDUG, the Seattle dot and Nuke user group. That's a great group with a strong core of dot and Nuke users in the uh, heart of Microsoft land. When I'm not doing DNN, I'm spending time with my wife and my son, and I'm very involved in our church and personal counseling. I kayak and the sound whenever I can. Uh, I do a little home remodeling, which is uh, mostly for my wife. And I run around with my three-year-old black lab, Pepper. Uh, the picture you see there is actually Pepper and I in front of a little statue uh, called A Boy and His Dog in Langley, Washington. So that's enough about me. Uh, shall we get started? Let's go. All right. 6.2. 6.2. OK, so for today, today's agenda, we're going to be covering uh, the following items. We'll begin with a brief discussion of our view of social for community. And then we'll jump into some specific usage on the .com website, for examples. Uh, we'll cover usage of the journal module, the profile and profile modules, social publishing, social groups, uh, and events. Uh, along the way, you should pick up some ideas for your own use of these modules, learn about some tools you might not have been aware of before, and see how we're using the strong social API that's in .NETNUKE 6.2 to integrate some of our own custom solutions as well. And at the end, we'll open up for questions. Does that sound good? Sounds great. All right. There we go. Common problems. Uh, first, we should consider some of the challenges that we're facing. Tisha alluded to a few of these, but .NET Duke 1.0 made its first debut almost 10 years ago. And how people communicated then was a lot uh, more simple and one-dimensional. There were fewer tools, fewer websites, fewer devices, fewer people and correspondingly lower expectations across the board. When .NET Nuke made its first public release, our website was nothing more than a few basic pages. We didn't even have a forum. Uh, forums were provided for us on Microsoft's ASP.NET website until 2005, when we actually introduced our own forum module and migrated the discussion to our own website. So 10 years ago, if you asked a question online, you're pretty ecstatic if you received a response at all. Uh, much less uh, if you received it in less than 24 to 48 hours. But uh, today, people can become agitated from lack of response in a matter of minutes. Today, people want to experience community their way. The tools have changed, websites have changed, and people and their expectations have also changed. You can tell uh, that the complexities that we all face have grown substantially. So our goal is to identify, predict, and solve these common problems for our own community. We're adapting and adapting quickly to satisfy our users in the most effective and efficient ways. All right, our view of the uh, social community. 
social isn't just something you bolt onto a website. It's not just a matter of installing the tools and declaring ourselves to be social. Implementing social functionality actually requires a lot of understanding uh, of both established and desired user behaviors. It requires planning and continuous iterative improvement. Uh, for that to happen, it also requires monitoring of what's happening, how people are engaging, and how well we're responding as an organization to user participation. Um, I just want to take a second. I got a couple of notes um, saying that uh, people had not been able to hear the audio. Um, if we could get people to raise their hand, um, if you can hear the audio. Okay. It appears that uh, it looks like everybody can hear us. Um, I think maybe there was a slight problem with the microphone. I will um, make sure that Scott speaks directly into the microphone. Thank you, guys. They said they hear it, but it doesn't sound good. Maybe we should. Oh, it doesn't sound good. Yeah. It could just be me. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. Is that better? Let's see, it sounds like it's better. Okay. Audio comes in and out, choppy and not clear sometimes. All right. All right. We'll see if we can't work on that. Maybe we'll have some directly in the line. I could uh, do that. All right. Testing. Uh, testing. One, two, three. Am I still talking to everyone? Hands going up, are they? Better. I, I get a lot better. Better. Okay. Terrific. Well, we'll just go ahead and do this. All right, so continuing where we were, we're looking at our view of social uh, for community on the second point, social being part of our overall community strategy integrated with content management designed to engage end users. Social actually has a purpose for us. It's part of uh, what we are, and we're designing it, designing it into the things that we do. Specifically, um, our direction is to increasingly get the right content in front of the right users at the right time and in the right channels. There are lots of cool tools to use, but an understanding of users' behavior, both current and desired, is required in order to be the most effective. In order to be engaging, we have to understand why our users are on our site, what they want to accomplish, and what will be interesting to them. This is personal, because every community is somewhat unique, and, and while we can all use common tools, the solutions that we assemble have to reflect the needs and characteristics of our own community of users. All right. One of my wife's favorite uh, movies is uh, is about a boy. Um, I'm probably dating myself here, but in that movie, Hugh Grant comes to the conclusion. Uh, he says that every man is an island, but clearly some men are part of island chains. Underneath, they are connected. Um, well, we agree with that. And interconnectivity with existing social networks is an important evolving story. Uh, today, we're strongly embracing uh, aspects of social publishing, that is, pushing content out to external networks. We're also poised to take increasing advantage of social authentication, but while there's a more straightforward uh, way to do that for new websites, it requires a little additional consideration to convert into existing user base. And last, uh, social is a buzzword, but being social is a discipline. Um, we recognize that social is a word that is used a lot now, and, and it's just part of the conversation. Uh, I think some folks that are responsible for implementing understand that saying social doesn't make it for you. Um, but the fact is you do need to have the right tools. And sometimes you need to use those buzzwords. You need to uh, say the right things just in order to be able to participate in the start of the conversation. But going forward from there, you've got to move forward from the buzzword of social to actually implementing social as a discipline throughout your organization. All right, and this leads us to our social community vision. So instead of focusing on specific features and tools, we're focusing on four areas relevant to community users. Those are ask, share, discuss, and learn. People want to ask questions. They may or may not also be seeking help. Sometimes questions are technical. Sometimes they're marketing related. Sometimes they're futures oriented. Uh, many people also want to share information. Possibly they want to make suggestions, even suggestions to help you improve your products. They also want to see what others are sharing. People want to talk. They want to communicate with one another about ideas, problems, and common interests. Sometimes they just want to leave a comment in the moment when something strikes them. And finally, people also want to learn. Uh, in the end, this is an important driving factor for us. People crave relevant information, and we want to get it to them.
Our first step uh, is to adjust our way of thinking. There are a lot of ways we could begin addressing each of these areas, but we are increasingly focusing more on in-the-box solutions. Previously, uh, for our own community, we've created custom applications, but uh, these have resulted in islands of applications that haven't worked well together. Information is stuck in silos. It's difficult to find, and the tools have been a challenge to maintain. So going forward, we're going to be setting an example by solving our own real-world challenges using more in-the-box solutions wherever possible. Now, this doesn't mean that we still don't have some specific needs uh, and require some custom solutions for things that are specific to our organization. But where we have custom apps, they'll become more tightly integrated into the services that are provided by the box solution. Now, if you're here uh, and starting or considering starting your own social journey, we'd recommend that you also start with some specific objectives in mind. Though beyond the scope of this web seminar, each of these areas is defined with specific objectives, metrics, tactical and strategic efforts, uh, operational plans, and staff. Okay, so let's look uh, at what we're doing a little bit today with social on .nnews.com. And at this point, I'm going to need to figure out how to get somebody to hold the phone for me so I can run the keyboard as well. Okay, um, wow. Let's see. Give me just a second here, we'll get prepared, and we'll move, uh, move some screens around for you. Okay, is everybody looking at the homepage of .nnews.com? Okay, terrific. Uh, the first place that we're introducing social is on the homepage uh, of .NET Nuke. For most websites, the most visited page tends to be your homepage, uh, and it's there that you have an opportunity to make a lasting impression. Uh, for the first time visitors come to .NET Nuke, we want to send them a clear message. We want them to understand that .NET Nuke is active. It's a social community with interesting content and opportunities to participate. Our homepage is not unlike many others, and perhaps not unlike yours. We display, as you can see, some rotating headers that have marketing images and calls to action. Uh, we also highlight news, uh, customers, web seminar opportunities like this one, and things like that. But you'll also notice that the right side of the page is dedicated to community-oriented information, beginning with uh, active community members and including our community live feed, which you see here on the right-hand side. So what is community live? If you're familiar with Facebook, then you're probably familiar with the concept of an activity stream, and that's what the journal provides. The journal displays a running list of actions that are taking place on the website. It includes the avatar, that's this picture, um, or uh, image of a user that's taking the action, a link to their profile page, and we'll talk more about that later, uh, and a relevant link to the associated activity. You can also see that it gives an indication of when the activity occurred. This instance of the journal uh, is simplest. Uh, the simplest social edition that you could make to a 6.2 website. We simply included an unfiltered instance of the journal, which means that it will display items from any module on our website that is uh, wired in, if you will, to the journal API. On .netnuke.com, we have a number of modules using the journal API. These include some modules that are freely available from the .NET Nuke Forge, some modules which are part of our commercial offerings, and some custom modules which serve specific business purposes for us, such as our .NET Nuke Forge. By including a journal instance here, we're accomplishing some important objectives. Uh, we're clearly stating to people that there is community here. There are real people participating. Additionally, we're drawing people directly into areas of interest and opportunities for participation. Finally, we're creating opportunities for users to engage one another in near real time. Uh, remember that challenge we were talking about earlier about quick response and people becoming agitated, <laughs> sometimes within minutes? Well, an activity stream can increase the likelihood that a user's inquiry will be seen and responded to by someone else quickly. So let's see how that might look. Uh, okay, let me take a quick moment and introduce you to my alter ego for today, uh, Dirk Shepard. Uh, let's see, looking for a mouse here. There we go. All right, this is Dirk Shepard's Facebook page. Uh, Dirk is a pretty new user, uh, me, that will use to demonstrate some new first features. Uh, for right now, let me go ahead and get logged in uh, as Dirk. Give me one moment here. And there we go. 
Okay. Get navigated to the next page we need to be at. Okay. Uh, the module uh, on this page, the one that you're looking at now, is called uh, Community Voice. Uh, this is an ideas module. It's currently an, uh, an internal module used by our product team to help prioritize enhancement requests. Any user can submit suggestions, vote for an existing suggestion, leave a comment, etc. So let's have Dirk uh, leave a comment uh, on a suggestion. We'll just take this one at the top, make workflow part of the core. And Dirk actually agrees that this is a terrific idea. And if you can get his uh, capitalization correct, this is a great idea. Okay, Dirk has something to say. So when Dirk posts his comment, you see, of course, that that comment exists in the context of the module. But let's go back to our homepage for a moment. And you'll see now that in our activity stream, Dirk Shepard has actually left a comment. Similarly, if, uh, if, if I posted a new idea, that would also show up in the activity stream, or it might also catch someone's eye. Because the activity stream includes links back to the content directly, it's much more likely now that someone will see that content quickly and also participate. As we can see, clicking that link takes us right back to it. Okay. And that concludes our demo of the community live uh, aspect of the home page on .com. Go back to our presentation for a moment. There we go. All right. The next item is the user profile. The user profile is an important page on any website. Uh, it functions as a landing page for other users uh, following journal or other links, and it can also serve as a dashboard page for users themselves. Um, as a landing page, it serves as the primary calling card, if you will, for that user. It's really the user's canvas uh, to promote themselves, their reputation, their interests, or even their own services. So let's begin with our home page again uh, and Community Live. And there's our mouse. Okay. So we're back to our Community Live. And so let's say we're an anonymous user, so I'm going to log out. And uh, I'm interested in who this uh, Dirk person is who has left this comment. My, he has an interesting hairdo. Um, so let's go have a look and see uh, whether this guy is authoritative. What's his reputation? What's going on with him? I'm going to open this in a different tab, retain our place there. And here I see Dirk Shepard's profile. Let's take a moment and digest what we uh, currently have available on the profile today. We're not going to go into every detail here, but there are some key items I do want to point out. Uh, one of those is that the profile is templatable. That means you can make it look like what you want it to look like. The profile module uses tokens to display user attributes according to the security settings that users have specified. So you can see here, for example, that my telephone number is blanked out because I haven't made that publicly available. Or I should say, excuse me, Dirk has not made that publicly available. Uh, okay, so um, if I chose, or if Dirk chose, he could make it available to others or not, to website members, to anonymous users, to friends and groups, or just to admins only. But the important takeaway is that you can design and define a profile template to suit your needs and to fit your website design. It doesn't have to look like ours. And users can individually specify the permissions of the information that they put in that profile, whether to who they want that to be visible to. Okay. So the second item is this right-hand menu, cleverly called menu. Um, <laughs> this menu is just an instance of what we call the console module. The console module is actually the same thing used by the administrator or, or host uh, functions as a landing page for, for all of those features. Um, it's part of the DNN core, and it just renders a list of pages from the site navigation. There's nothing really magic about this, except that it does highlight another point of social extensibility that we should talk about, and those are profile modules. For this discussion, let's use a profile that's a little more flushed out. Um, we're going to take one of our well-known community members, Ernst Peter Taminga. Um, I can't see the list, but it's quite possible Ernst might even be on the line. 
Um, Eric Peter is a DNN partner from Holland, a longtime open source team member. He's team lead for the FAQ and events modules, and uh, in general, he's just a pretty good guy. So let me quickly navigate to his profile. All right. So the first thing you'll notice is that Ernst Peter's bio is a little more substantial than Dirk's. Uh, he's promoting his services, and he's also promoting his status as a gold certified partner. Um, let's look at uh, those menu items uh, now also for a moment. Okay, community exchange. On this page now, um, in addition to Ernst Peter's image, um, you'll see two tabs that reflect his participation in the community exchange. You can see the questions that he has asked, as well as uh, answers that he has given. Um, we can see that Ernst Peter is pretty active, he's pretty participative, and if we wanted to take the time to get to know him, we could read through his replies and judge for ourselves. We can also take a look at this other tab, the Extensions Forge. As I mentioned, Ernst Peter's pretty active open source contributor. You can see here that he participates in a number of different Forge teams. But what I want for you to take away from this is that the user profile is extensible. These community exchange and extension Forge pages on the profile illustrate the concept of creating profile modules. These are modules which are designed specifically to report uh, on a particular user. In our case, these make sense for our participative open source project. But consider a profile module for an intranet, for example, that reflects response to user inquiries. Uh, there really are a lot of opportunities to apply this functionality in ways that make sense for your specific need, virtually for any type of business. A final note about profile modules. There's a security setting for visibility of these modules uh, um, you know, as they show up as menu items in the console so that not everyone can see them. So for example, um, if you were logged in, you would see also in this menu your uh, message center. Um, I don't see that because I shouldn't be able to see Ernst Peter's message center. You'll never see that on anyone else's profile. But similarly, you can limit profile page access to friends and groups uh, and things like that as well. All right. Now, just a quick note. Some of you may have additional questions that we're not able to get to in the web seminar. I do want to take a moment and encourage you to take advantage of our community exchange, which is located at answers. Dot, dot net news dot com. And uh, quickly, I will show you that in case you had not seen it before. Um, this is what we're just looking at relative to Ernst Peter's profile. But so if you have questions, this is really the place to, to make sure that one gets answered and gets answered in a way that other people can benefit from the, uh, from the answers. So uh, I would just encourage you to take advantage of that. Okay, let's go back to our presentation for a moment as we're wrapping up uh, looking at the user profile. How are we doing on time, Tish? We are excellent. Do we have um, we have three more sections to go through? Uh, two more sections. Two is perfect. Okay, good. All right. I like I like to hear I'm perfect. I know it's I know it's not true, but it sure is flattering. All right, let's move on. Let's take a let's take a look at user groups as social groups. Okay, so again, here we're going to go to the web. Find my right link. All right. Previously, um, we maintained a suite of custom tools for creating and managing user groups. But we're now transitioning away from those custom tools to use the social groups functionality that's built into uh, DNM 6.2. There's not going to be time today to go through every aspect of social groups, but I'd like to demonstrate a few key items for you to consider as you're putting together your own implementation. Uh, the first item for consideration is group creation. Um, as a best practice, you'll probably want to limit who is able to create groups. This is controlled using standard roles and permissions. In our implementation, what we're doing is uh, utilizing uh, these two groups on top in order to help people. Um, we are directing folks that are interested in starting new groups to join a special interest group where we'll then use good old-fashioned in-house procedures to determine if a new group is appropriate. Uh, in this case, uh, business process trumps automation, and we want to be personally connected to folks who are starting .NET new user groups but we're using our social tools to facilitate that process of personal touch. Okay, so let's take a look at an existing group. All 
All right. As I mentioned, uh, I am the sort of de facto founder and one of the leads of the local Seattle user group. Um, our test user, Dirk Shepard, does not belong to the Seedbed group, but he'd like to join. Uh, so allow me to go ahead and log in as Dirk again here real quick. Okay, and now you can see that Dirk is logged in. Um, he has another option here. He has a button that says uh, Join Group. So we set our group membership on .nnu.com to require administrator approval so that when Dirk uh, does ask to join, the owners of the CDA group will receive notifications. Um, personally, we prefer this approach for user groups because it proactively notifies the group owners of someone's interest, which prompts interaction. Uh, you might also have interest groups which users can join anonymously. Uh, so let's have Dirk click the Join button and see what happens as we go through that process. Uh, the Join button, by default, appears both on the group list as well as on the individual group profile. So clicking Join Group. Aha, we now see that we have membership pending. So. Um, we're going to flip over now and take a look at my personal uh, profile. So I'm going to log in as myself real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, pardon all the security context switching here, but I want to actually show you what goes on uh, here. So let me now get to my own profile. Now recall that we mentioned that the user profile was, uh, was also a functional page. Here we're interacting with the Message Center, which is part of .NET Nuke. Um, in Message Center, we distinguish between two types of communications, messages and notifications. Uh, notifications are messages that are generated internally, um, usually as part of a workflow. Uh, for example, responding to a group join request. So if I look under notifications, very, very well, there you go. As you can see, I received a request from Dirk Shepard to join the group. From here, I can approve, reject, or dismiss uh, that group, that request. Um, or I could, uh, I could message him, because um, I can reach his profile. I could ask him questions. I could examine his profile, or do whatever I determined that was necessary before accepting the request. But um, the point of this really, again, is to ensure that some interaction occurs between the group owner and the person desiring to join the group. We are about facilitating actual real-life interaction. Okay. So because we're a pretty open and friendly group in Seattle, we're just going to go ahead and accept Dirk right away. Well, Dirk, you know, he's, he's got gray hair, so I want him on my team. <laughs> All right. So let me log out of Scott's profile again. And uh, let's go back and see what Dirk has going on. Okay. Clickety click click. Okay. So Dirk now and his profile, you can see he also has a message center, which you didn't see when we first saw his profile when we were an anonymous user, but logged in as himself now. He has a message center. And there you go. Uh, there you can see he has actually uh, one message that's uh, uh, actually indicating that he uh, this, this was the vote or the comment they made earlier actually uh, in the uh, ideas. But if we look at his notifications, you can see he actually has a notification from me. There you go. Uh, the only action suitable for this is to dismiss it, and there's also of course a link back into the user group. So he looked at that and he is excited and he could dismiss it. But before we do, let's also go ahead and navigate to the group. Dismiss, that notification is gone. So now, now that he's a member of the Seedbed group, we can have a look at the group's uh, events. It's not necessary to be a member uh, of a user group to see their events. They are public. We want people to know about them. Uh, and any time an event is created or someone responds to an RSVP for one, those entries are also fed into the journal. But uh, let's look at the CZ page and have a look at its events. Uh, notice that the menu on the right looks familiar. 
Uh, social profiles work in a manner exactly like user profiles and can be extended in the same way. So the social events module uh, is one that we're creating specifically to serve user groups. Although it's not yet available, it is part of an upcoming dynamic solution. Okay, since I'm in the group now, uh, pardon me, since Dirk is in the group now, <laughs> we'll go ahead and have him RSVP to that August event. I am currently set to a change. I've already done that. Let's uh, have a look at that event also and see an aspect of social publishing. So Dirk has also already liked this event. Uh, which has been uh, published to Facebook. Okay, and that concludes our view of user groups as social groups. That's a lot to chew on, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, as I indicated, there's a lot potentially to cover here and we're just sort of scratching the surface, but I do hope that we're giving you a good introduction to things that are possible and how we're actually using these tools for ourselves. So we have one more example. I'd like to go ahead and move on to that one. And that is DNN World 2012 Session Survivor. All right, that's exciting. So let's go ahead and bring up one more set of links here. Give me one moment. Get into my link, and there we are. So we're going to look at a more customized example of using the journal. Um, we're going to look at a live user contest that we're running in association with the upcoming DNN World event, which is October 10th through the 12th. By the way, if you've not already registered for this event, I encourage you to do that at dnnworld.nuke.com. It's actually great fun and a good excuse to take your family to Orlando if you don't already have one. So, uh, The Session Survivor Contest pits a number of community-submitted session topics against one another. Community members are invited to vote daily for the sessions that they like best. Each week, the session with the lowest vote count is removed uh, you know, from the island, so to speak, so that at the end, we'll have it narrowed down to the few that are chosen by the community. So let me scroll down just a pitch here. Uh, before I do that, I'll just point out also actually here, um, the, the other parts of the .com site don't have this updated little panel here, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and point it out. Out of the box for 6.2, this is actually what the panel looks like. Uh, so. You can see here, just with simple head login, log out, and a name, uh, out of the box, 6.2 actually has a little more enhanced uh, widget there that provides your, your avatar, your name, uh, the option to check your messages uh, and notifications right away. So um, that's implemented on the DNN world portion of the site, but not on the rest yet. Okay, so scrolling down. What you're looking at is an instance of the contest module. Uh, that's what's on the left. Uh, it's a free open source module that you can find in the .NET Nuke Forge. Uh, and the other, this item on the right, of course, is an instance of the journal module. Now, this instance of the journal module is filtered specifically to display only contest votes and comments. So the activity that's being displayed doesn't detract from the subject of this page. Um, consider examples that you might have for your own usage, such as a filtered list for support questions, product ratings, or, or blog comments. So let's have Dirk go ahead and vote for an entry. Hmm, who do you think? Who should we favor? <laughs> oh, well, well, troll. Woo! Oh, let's see. Well, you know what, I think, we'll, let's go ahead and stick with Ernst Peter. Ernst Peter volunteered his profile for us. Ernst Peter is also up for our presentation as well. So, um, we can actually, let's go ahead and we can view, just to give you a, an idea of what that contest module looks like. So there's the detail for his presentation. As you can see, a bunch of comments. And we're gonna go ahead and cast a vote for him. So thank you for voting for today. And if we come back, refresh this page, and have a look, of course you'll see that Dirk Shepard has voted uh, for this particular session. Uh, one thing that we didn't point out actually before is that you do also have the ability, or user does also have the ability to delete those uh, uh, things that they want to. And everybody likes everything they post to be in every activity stream. So if Dirk wanted to, he could go ahead and delete that. There you go. All right, now this may look similar to the community live that we covered at the beginning of the presentation, but I want to point out to you about this is that while an unfiltered journal is very handy for promoting activity, it doesn't really lend itself to focus. The interior pages of the website, uh, you probably have pretty specific reasons for building those pages and for trying to draw users to them. 
an unfiltered journal in a case like this would really prove a distraction. It would take people away from the very subjects that you're trying to reinforce. So in this instance, the journal module is just configured to filter out all activity except that that's relative to the concept module and the subject matter of this page. That way we keep people where we want them and we keep them actually intrigued. And that concludes our discussion of the DNN World Session Survivor. All right. So let's see. There are a few resources that are also available to you to consider. And so we're looking those for you here. Um, we're still pretty early in our own social journey. Um, SIG2 has only been out for about a month, and so we're still actually uh, implementing it for ourselves. Um, but there's a lot of available functionality, and we're just beginning to get into all of it. Um, as we discussed, social is not just a suite of tools, but it's a discipline that requires understanding of your community and the desired behaviors that you want to encourage. We started with user groups, profiles, journal integration, uh, with conversational tools, um, and kind of wondering where you'll start. Um, as you're starting your social journey, there are resources that are available to help you. Um, first, if you've not actually begun investigating DNN 6.2 yet, DNN 6.2.1 is available for download. Go to downloads.newt.com. You should do that today. Also, our director of training, Chris Hammond, has published really a great library of 6.2 how-to videos that will aid with module configuration and setup. So if you're looking for modules and tools that take advantage of 6.2 features, you can find those in our Forge and in the .NET Nuke store. Uh, in general, just a search for 6.2 or social will help you find those things. And for the developers in the group, our wiki actually contains a quick start document that has a ton of information on APIs and development tasks in order to hook your own modules into the journal, um, create them user and group profile modules, etc. Finally, if you have questions, again, I'll encourage you to look in our community exchange at answers.netnuke.com or if you have suggestions for product enhancements to use the community voice. Okay, so just a, a quick recap. Uh, we began with a brief discussion of our view of social community, and then we discussed some specific usage, <laughs> specific usage examples on .nanews.com. We covered uh, the journal, profile and profile modules, social publishing, and social groups and events. Um, I do hope that you picked up some ideas along the way for your own use and that you learned maybe a few things about some of these tools that you hadn't been aware of before. Um, also, I hope that you can see how the strong social API in .NET Nuke might be able to be integrated into some of your own custom solutions. This is an incredibly strong social platform and the depths of it are only just beginning to be plumbed. Again, social is not a tool set, it's a discipline, but with the right tools, your social vision can become a reality like ours. Thank you. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Scott. That was amazing. Um, now we're going to go to some questions. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted, first of all, to make sure everyone knew as part of our standard web seminar series, we do post uh, a replay of this web seminar. It's usually up within 24 hours. Um, for those of you who are on the line or registered for the event, you will receive an email follow-up that will have a link to that when, it's, uh, when it is published, but if you, otherwise you can just keep looking for it. Um, so you will be able to um, view these slides again, get all those resources, check out all the links that Scott has provided you with. And uh, now we're going to take some questions. Uh, there, I do want to say that there's quite a, a lot of questions. So um, we're going to try and answer ones that are most relevant to the, the broader audience uh, in the time we have left. And then um, we will follow up uh, individually with uh, other questions. OK, thanks, Tish. So I have uh, a list here. How much time do we have, Tish? We have 15, well, like 12 minutes. OK, perfect. All right, well, we'll start running down here. I do have a list of questions in front of me, so we'll just start tapping those one at a time. Uh, the first question that I have here uh, looks like, will the new group module be in CE? Um, I am going to assume that the question was really about social groups. Social groups functionality is, in fact, uh, in CE. It's just part of the base product. Social groups is actually a very foundational component uh, of what's in .NET Nuke as a platform. Now, there are some differences between CE and PE uh, in terms of extended functionality. For example, the events uh, uh, social group module that I mentioned is not a part of uh, community edition. Um, it, in fact, it's 
It's not part of anything right at the moment. It's being built for our own use for user groups, but will likely be part of a commercial edition solution. Uh, so, but uh, all that base functionality does exist, and uh, I actually just should take a moment and just point out that just because something isn't in a community edition provided by us necessarily, it doesn't mean that there won't be lots of options available. Since the product has just been released, the API has also just been published, so we're actually just now beginning to see some of our commercial vendors as well as some of our open source uh, contributors start to pick up on those APIs and develop things. So we're actually looking forward to all the different kinds of modules that will be showing up uh, that work with, uh, with social groups, uh, with profiles, et cetera. Okay. Uh, the next question, is there an RSS feed on the journal? Um, some of these products are product related questions and so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and defer to those. Do me a favor, if you would, if you have a, those kind of product specific related questions, go ahead and post those in the community exchange and we'll make sure that somebody from our product team comes and answers those and then those answers will be available for everyone to see. Uh, let's see. Next question says, how do you add a journal module without the post prompt? Um, I believe that you're just looking there without the ability to actually have somebody enter and type something in. Um, it, it is just a setting actually in the module, so that's uh, something that can be configured easily by an administrator. Uh, next question says, why use the console module within the profile and not DDR menu? Uh, well, quite honestly, we could use the DDR menu. It's just a style question. I think anybody out there that's building it on a new site knows that there are uh, nine different ways to skin a cat. And so the way that we chose to skin it uh, here was to use the profile, uh, or pardon me, the console module. Um, but there's, you could use any, any menu module that you wanted to in order to do that. The console module just has built into it uh, the nice permission grids that are appropriate for the social functionality, uh, allowing things to be seen by friends or groups or things like that. Okay, next question. Why doesn't the journal update automatically like a Facebook feed without hitting the refresh button? Uh, that's a terrific question, and honestly, I, I'm sure that that's probably a enhancement request that's already in line with, uh, pardon me, the pipeline for products. Um, so um, you could probably go and actually either suggest that on the community voice module that I pointed out earlier, um, or actually it's probably already on there and you can just cast a vote for it. But um, my guess would be that that's an option that's going to be in a later version. Uh, let's see. Not everybody actually likes that. So. Uh, why is community voice not part of DNN? Uh, community voice is part of DNN, but it is uh, just a piece of functionality that's being built specifically for our professional edition. So we are building a lot of things that have been released with community edition, the Q&A, for example, uh, and social updates to the blog and the contest module. But um, we've got to have something around here to actually get built. So that's in that product. Let's see. Next question. How is a profile module created versus normal modules, or are these predefined without integration API? Actually, you know, it's really a pretty simple uh, thing to do. Um, what you didn't really see uh, if you weren't looking was that included in the URL uh, for uh, those modules are query string parameters for either a group ID or for a user ID. These are very simple modules. They really just know how to respond to those query string parameters. So if you brought up a profile that didn't have a user ID specified, it would just probably display you a nice, you know, I'm sorry, no data match your request uh, message. But uh, so there's nothing really magic going on with your modules, but they are specifically constructed to respond to those, uh, those keys being embedded in the, uh, in the query string for the URL. Let's see. Still moving down the list here. How do you filter journal activity so that displays only targeted modules rather than all? Aha. Um, again, that's similar, Filter, filtering out by module IDs. Again, it's a function of what's going on with the query string. So being on the same page, uh, like the one we showed you with DNN World, that's really filtering out other activity because it's filtering out by the module instance. Uh, so you can see there's some, actually some very simple yet very clever and powerful things being used to actually uh, get the right data going to you here. Um, it doesn't, it, these aren't big, heavy uh, processes that are running or anything, you know, terribly magic happening under the sheets. So it's actually simple and elegant. Uh, let's see, moving down. Integration with external sources, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. Okay, good, uh, good question. There are a number of things uh, in the box. As I mentioned, right now we're focusing uh, 
first really on social publishing. So you can see that a lot of the things we showed you actually have like Facebook and Google Plus uh, sort of like buttons and recommend buttons. That's social publishing, and we have a lot of emphasis going on there. Out of the box, uh, there are actually some authentication providers for Facebook, uh, Google Plus, I believe. Um, again, I'd have to defer to uh, the product team. I don't want to get the list wrong, but there's a couple of them in there. So we actually are very keen on getting our own Facebook authentication in place for ourselves. But as I mentioned, Facebook authentication, if you're starting a new site, is actually a pretty uh, straightforward thing to do. Because if you're starting new users and you start using Facebook authentication, and you, that's, that's part of what you're doing from the very beginning, then that's fairly straightforward. But we have a community already of nearly a million members. And so we have a lot of profiles that we would be sort of having to contend with in mixed mode. So we're actually looking through that ourselves, not as a technical problem, but really more as a uh, sort of a user experience uh, issue to make sure that um, our users who want to use Facebook authentication will be able to do that and that looks really well for them. So it isn't really a technical problem. So before we actually implement that on .netnews.com, we're trying to make sure that we make the integration of the existing profile and the Facebook profile um, as clean as possible. So let's see. Next question, getting users to interact on my site is very difficult. Yes, we, we understand. The easy way uh, to start is to go where the users are, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Google. Is there a plan to have profiles feed or shown on a DNN website? The ultimate goal, of course, would be to not go to a variety of sites or uh, using tools like Hootsuite to publish. Okay, that's a great question. Um, I think there's a couple of questions uh, kind of embedded in here. One is, you know, we believe in using the right tools for the job, um, and the kind of publishing that you're talking about with Hootsuite, um, there are specific tool sets designed for that sort of thing. In fact, we've even used some ourselves. If you look at our Facebook page, you can see that we use a tool called Sendable actually right now. Um, so right now, there really aren't any plans for .NET Nuke to uh, compete directly with those kinds of tools. It's not what we do. Um, Let's see. So the other part of that, uh, integrating content uh, on your Facebook page. Uh, right now, actually, there is a Forge module that's available, which is uh, open to what they call a fan gate. In, in a fan gate, you can find that out. Right now, you actually can send a content from your .NET website onto Facebook. Uh, and that's a fairly easy thing to do if you understand how to do that in Facebook. Um, but it requires actually getting on Facebook, creating a Facebook iframe app, and then directing it to a particular page on your DNN website. If you look at .NET Nuke's page, which is facebook.com slash .NET Nuke, um, you'll actually see that we have uh, several pages there which are really showing iframe pages from our .NET Nuke website to display videos and product information. Okay, I'm being signaled that I have time for one more question. <laughs> All right, so I have a whole stack here. Let's see. Let me try to grab one here. Uh, let's see. Are the social core modules uh, mobile compatible? Um, and are the social modules available in Spanish? See how I snuck in two questions in there? Um, <laughs> um, uh, mobile compatible. I, I believe that the answer is uh, yes on those. Certainly as they're being redone, they're being redone not only with the social platform uh, in mind, but also all of the latest features of .NET Nuke. So uh, probably those are going through some continuative iterative improvement. But uh, most of those modules actually are displaying well uh, in mobile uh, devices. Um, as far as being in Spanish, um, you got to look for people to contribute uh, those things. But anything that is included in the core uh, it does have a Spanish translation. Uh, it's part of our regular product delivery uh, at this point. Spanish, German, uh, Italian, French, and Dutch, I believe. Um, and then, of course, there are lots of community members who also contribute translations. You can be on the lookout for those. So I'm getting a flag waved at me, so I guess I'm done answering questions for the day. But I really appreciate all of you guys being here, and I really look forward to continuing to share uh, our social journey with you um, as time goes by. Cheers. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. And a huge thank you to Scott. Uh, it's always great to have members of our own team here to present You know exactly what we're doing. Uh, we kind of really believe in what I call drinking your own champagne here, using .NET Nuke uh, at .NET Nuke to really showcase what, it, what the capabilities of the platform are. Thank you again attend, for attending. And again, we will be posting a replay of this within 24 hours. And uh, we appreciate all your questions and your participation and hope to see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>